Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and today we are taking a blast to the past in this retro inspired 2003 Ford Thunderbird. In this video we're going to walk around, point out some of the retro design cues that Ford baked into this and hit the road to see if it drives like its design would lead you to believe. All right, starting under the hood of this retro-inspired Ford, you get a Jaguar-derived 3.9-liter V8 under the hood. Now, this actually has variable valve timing, which gives it a benefit over the 2002-year model, making 280 horsepower and 286 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to Ford's five-speed automatic, which is good, but not great which is probably the same that could be said about this V8 engine because you're not buying this for performance. When the T-Bird first came out in the 50s, it was set to go up against the likes of the first gen Chevy Corvette, which itself had a straight six under the hood and was not the powerhouse that we know it today. It was a cruiser. And that's what this invokes. This invokes the first gen T-Bird and it is very, very happy cruising down the road. Taking a look around and just admiring what Ford did here, you can either blame or thank Chrysler and their PT Cruiser for this very retro inspired design that was so popular in the early 2000s. I already mentioned the PT Cruiser, but you had Chevy's SSR retro convertible truck thing that also occupied the same space and really kind of provided the same experience, fun top-down cruising on the road. There is a lot of 50s T-Bird styling in here from the round headlights, the round fog lights, this crate grill up front, and yes, this classic T-Bird emblem with the teal in it. If you can count all of the T-Bird and Thunderbird scripts, in this vehicle, you might find yourself with a very unlucky number. Looking on top of the hood here, you have a very fake hood scoop, which, eh, it is what it is. And around the side, you have a very fake heat extractor porthole, whatever you wanna say here, all going with that retro design. You do get a call out to the fact that there is actually a V8 under the hood, which is nice. Get these chrome and very mirror-like wheels that do a good job of reflecting everything that they come across, which give you a nice shine wrapped in 235 55 R17 uh, rubber. It, it's good. It's a tour car meant for cruising down the road. Coming around to the profile, you get perhaps a controversial design because it's very long and flat. You get the optional hard top on this one. This is removable. There is a convertible soft top underneath the tonneau down here. And you get this retro inspired porthole here on the side. It, it's a clean design, very true to its history. I wish they had given it some 50s era fins or something back here on the rear quarter panel. You get that Thunderbird script down here round tail lights to mimic the round headlights and fog lights. And here we go again, that retro inspired T-Bird on the trunk lid. I'm actually gonna have to go around to the front to pop the trunk. I did not leave the keys on me. It's decent for what it is. You get a remote release here on the door. And considering you have a convertible soft top uh, folded up under the tonneau back there, it, it gets decent room for a convertible of the era. But as I mentioned, that long kind of tapering shape really hampers you on the rear storage back here. The platform of this is shared very heavily with Lincoln's LS sedan, which auto reviewers of the time really loved. But in this, it doesn't quite translate. It's not a corner carver. It's not exactly a performance and enthusiast vehicle. It's meant for cruising down the road. Let's hop inside and go over some of the features in there. 
and then let's hit the road and see how this thing drives. All right, sitting inside the 2003 Ford Thunderbird, you get some retro spot inspired white gauges with that teal needle that invokes the same teal that is on the T-Bird, on the hood, on the trunk, and in a few other places. It's a nice retro callback. In here, you can definitely see the parts sharing with the LS platform on which it is based. You get typical Ford switch gear everywhere you look of the early 2000s. That includes your window and lock switches here. You do get an interesting plastic aluminum look here that is actually nice for the era. Somewhat soft touch uh, materials here on the upper dash and doors. LS <laughs> steering wheel with a T-Bird on it. You get that five-speed automatic transmission. Very basic center stack. You do get your convertible controls here, two-way heated seats, and then uh, very early 2000s Ford interior. Uh, let's face it, American interior. I'm not gonna just knock Ford here. This sitter console armrest, for one, it's too high and I don't know why because this is all unneeded and like this this thing it, it shakes and creaks unlike modern American cars. The seats are comfortable they're big and wide. I will say though especially with this optional hard top in place I'm 5'10 I'm like the average American male when I sat down in this my head touched the roof and I had to make sure that the seat was all the way down. So if you're six foot or more, you might want to get in one of these before buying one online for its nostalgia factor. The seats are power slide front and back, but oddly enough, they are a manual recline. And then there is a nice little parcel shelf back here behind you to help with the limited cargo space of that trunk. All said, it's a comfortable interior that really, unfortunately, with this one having the hardtop fixed in place, kind of defeats some of the purpose of this vehicle, and that's top-down cruising. Speaking of which, uh, I'm gonna hop in it, put the manual handbrake down, and I'm gonna go. All right, gearheads, setting off in the 2000 retro inspired 50s inspired Ford Thunderbird with hard top in place I've got the windows down so that's exactly what this thing is meant for beautiful days like today the temperature is 72 as we currently sit here in East Texas it is an absolute gorgeous day it's time to take the T-Bird out for a spin now I mentioned before, this was based off the Lincoln LS platform, rear wheel drive, relatively fun vehicle of the era, and manufacturers or reviewers really liked them of the time. In this platform, I'm going to say, not so great. Um, it's heavy, it, it, it is not the enthusiast machine, it, it begs to be compared to the Corvette because it calls back to those 50s era Corvettes that it was designed to compete against. And this is no modern Corvette competitor. Sure, it has a V8 under the hood, but at 280 horsepower, it's not a race car. The suspension in this it is floaty, but um, not great when it comes to carbon corners. The reason you would buy this is the reason why so many manufacturers went to retro designs and started digging up their design history in the early 2000s. Build quality was not great, as you can tell by the creaks and rattles in this thing. They really wanted to cash in on that nostalgia, that retro history. And that's what this is good for. It's also good for top-down cruising because when you get in this, all of the nitpicks, all of the complaints kind of go away. This is meant for cruising down the road, not at high speeds, but just enjoying the day and the weather and the weekend. That's what this is for. It, it's not a great car. It's a fun car. It's a cool car. I'll admit when these came 
out. I thought the retro design was interesting. I wasn't in love with it, but I respected what they were doing. As I get a little older now, I have a little more appreciation for not only this era, but the era in which they are trying to harken back to. I, I will give them credit for what they were attempting to do here. Yes, modern American cars have overcome build quality issues. Yes, this really was just a cash grab for nostalgia's sake. But its intended mission of being a fun cruiser is accomplished quite well. The sales for the 2002 model were actually quite well received by Ford leadership to the point that they tweaked the engine, gave it the variable valve timing, and increased horsepower and torque of this 2003 model, but it wasn't enough to save it because by 2005, the plug had been pulled, and in the summer of that year, the last one had been manufactured. So you get just a few years of retro-inspired goodness that follow along the same lines as the main competition of this vehicle at the time from Chevrolet, and that would be their SSR convertible pickup truck thing. Again, not a corner carver because it was a body on frame truck, but a really fun cruiser of the time with a convertible top that you just, oh my gosh, this turn. You just get out and cruise for the weekends. And, and that's really what these were meant for. I'm behind a Honda CRV right now, and I'll be going around the corner at the same speed that that is. And there's body roll, the steering is kind of heavy, which you really notice in day to day driving, like in parking lots. Oh, it, it was atrocious. And yeah, this. This does not say sports car to me. This does not say performance vehicle to me. This does not say enthusiast vehicle to me. This says weekend cruiser, which isn't a bad thing. As long as you know what it is that you're getting when you go out and buy one. Final thoughts. Should you buy an 03 Ford Thunderbird? Well, that's up to you. How much do you like mid 2000s, mid 50s retro, because that's about all this really has going for it. It turns heads when you're cruising down the road. If I ever got to take this hard top off, uh, I think I would have loved it just a little bit more than I did. It's fun, you know, the rear steps out if you give it a little bit of power around the corner, but this really is just a weekend cruiser. And whether or not you can afford a fun weekend cruiser, well, that's up to you. Huge thanks to our friends at House of Cars for loaning us this vehicle today. We will put a link down to their website in the description below. But uh, yeah, there you have it. A mid-2000s, mid-50s retro T-Bird.